Hey guys, Daniel here and welcome back to the Finance Channel. Here today, I gotta update you guys on Voyager Digital as the CEO, Steve Ehrlich, just went on an interview yesterday and talked all about Voyager regarding the stock, the token, and the product. And in this video, I wanna summarize exactly what he said and hopefully offer some value and perspective along the way. If you're not yet subscribed to the Finance Channel and enjoy these Voyager updates, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's completely free to do and let's get into it. When we talk about the first thing that he said, User growth. Voyager has been experiencing exponential user growth over the past few months and over the past year. Looking out from the past to the future, he attributes two main things to growth. One, concentrating on marketing, and two, product development. When we talk about marketing, that is obviously advertisements, partnerships with influencers, referrals, etc. And that helps drive user growth onto the platform. Next is product development. The more products and services that Voyager offers as a company, the more their total addressable market, or TAM, expands, and the more potential revenue and users come in. Next, he talked about the VGX token, and this is uh, still parallel with that user growth. He says that the VGX token has a massive community across all social media platforms, and again, talking about the referrals from that, they've been absolutely incredible, and just the word of mouth from the VGX uh, community essentially has been absolutely incredible in providing user growth onto the platform. Next here, I wanna talk about lending and crypto, or yeah, lending and interest risks. When you deposit any sort of amount of money or a cryptocurrency onto Voyager, you get to earn up to 11% interest, right? If you deposit Bitcoin, I think it's right around 7%, but just generally, you get a much higher interest rate than you normally would in, let's say, just a savings account. Now, a lot of people like to say, all right, we're getting these high interest rates. Where are these coming from? Are they lending it out to uh, you know very sketchy companies? No, they're lending it out to reputable firms. When we talk about the three main companies that Voyager lends out their money to, number one, Galaxy Digital, number two, BitGo, and number three, Jump Capital. All three of these are very reputable firms with high quality balance sheets. This is one characteristic that all the companies that Voyager lends out money to has. They all have phenomenal balance sheets and a company like Galaxy Digital, which is their number one partner, is publicly traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange and the OTC market as well. But just generally speaking, all of them are reputable firms with reputable products and high quality balance sheets to really minimize that risk. When we talk about the downtrend that Voyager has had over the past couple of months here, obviously we're kind of bouncing back here in the past couple of days, but you know, he essentially said that this pullback that we've seen in Voyager is mainly attributed to the overall crypto pullback that we've seen, just generally speaking, across all crypto stocks, including you know, Coinbase, Big G Digital Assets, Banks, uh, Voyager, they've all seen their stock prices decline pretty significantly since April, right? Or since the beginning of April, rather. And he says that you know, an overall movement of assets around the cryptocurrency industry is what's mainly attributed to the Voyager downtrend. He doesn't see anything wrong with the business as of right now that could be pinpointed as a reason for the downtrend. So, you know, he's saying that, you know, it's just an overall crypto movement that has caused this downtrend. Nothing to worry about. Then he talked about the buyback. Obviously, yesterday, Voyager announced that they're buying back up to 5% of their shares. This quote really got to me. We believe our stock is really undervalued. Steve said this yesterday, and he said that, you know, they believe this because of the growth that they see from the end of March into April. Obviously, we don't know what this number is. We don't know what the growth was from the end of March to April, right? All we know is, you know, we got some data at the end of March, but we don't know revenue numbers. We don't know user numbers in April, for example. We'll get a better sense of that potentially when they report their earnings in late May. But just generally speaking, this makes me very bullish on Voyager, just in the short term here, seeing the CEO, Steve Ehrlich, say that the growth numbers have been phenomenal from the end of March to, uh, into now, into April, is absolutely phenomenal from a short-term perspective. And again, really adds to my confidence in Voyager as a company over the long run. Next, we talk about the market belief, right? This is essentially done, and he, he said this, right? He says, uh, you know, with this buyback, we're doing this to show the market our belief in the business and our belief in the growth that our business is experiencing. They believe that the market is underpricing Voyager based on what they see I'm from Voyager, essentially, from a business standpoint, from a revenue standpoint, from a profit and growth standpoint. So just seeing that makes me very bullish on Voyager, and I'm very excited to see what happens over the next couple of months as they report more and more data. 
Next, you know, he talked about, um, well, he actually got asked the question about crypto being a consolidating industry. When we talk about that, you know, we see potentially like the major players in the cryptocurrency industries, you know, potentially like Robinhood, Coinbase, Voyager, becoming the main exchanges and everyone else kind of like falling apart in a way, right? Uh, he says that, you know, back in his time, he was obviously very involved with E-Trade. He's one of the co-founders there. Uh, back in his days in E-Trade, he saw a major consolidation in the stock exchange industry with a lot of the main players, like again, Fidelity, e uh, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, becoming the biggest brokerages and everyone else just kind of falling away. That's what he's talking about of uh, essentially that consolidating industry. And he says that the cryptocurrency industry will follow suit and says that Voyager, we will be a consolidator. So he believes that Voyager will be one of the few companies that ends up coming out on top when it comes to the cryptocurrency exchange market. And again, looking out to 2025, which is where I like to look at with all of my investments, this makes me very bullish on Voyager, seeing that the crypto or that the, you know, Steve Ehrlich, the CEO, believes that they'll be one of the few that are on top. Next, we talk about acquisitions. Uh, he said that Voyager is actively looking for new acquisitions to bring new products to the platform. And again, this is really in line with his first statement about user growth. You know, uh, one of the things that drives user growth is new product and product expansion. And one of the ways that he uh, plans to do this uh, besides just regular innovation is by acquiring companies. So he says they're actively looking for acquisitions. They're only making smart acquisitions. We'll see if that happens going forward. But I mean, just a couple days ago, they announced that they're getting into the payment processing industry. So that's very interesting. But again, the more acquisitions they make, the more smart acquisitions they make, again, that continues to open up that opportunity for Voyager from a revenue and business perspective. Next, he was asked about regulation. How is regulation going to impact the cryptocurrency industry? Will it come? Will it not? He said that, you know, with time, regulation will come to the crypto industry, but he says that it's going to be thoughtful regulation. A few weeks ago, we talked about the crypto kind of like a flash crash that we had uh, due to potential money laundering coming from financial institutions. And we talked about this thing called uh, like kind of like Bitcoin shuffling, where essentially you can uh, take your Bitcoin put it into like a washing machine with, you know, thousands of other Bitcoins, all of them get bun or kind of like jumbled up and they get spat out into different kind of like IP addresses. And that's one of the ways that money laundering takes place within the cryptocurrency industry. And we talked about how, you know, that may be one of the places that sees regulations into the future. And that's kind of like one of those examples of thoughtful regulation, things that eventually end up uh, preventing fraudulent activity in the cryptocurrency industry. I think that will come and that will be very beneficial with just, uh, you know, improving the sentiment around cryptocurrencies from a variety of different standpoints, but just generally speaking, he's thinking thoughtful regulation will come. Thoughtful is a key word. He says that he's communicated with many congressmen and congresswomen on the topic of regulation. And he says that, you know, it will be great for the industry, but it will take time. It won't happen right away. It's gonna take a few years for that regulation to come to fruition. But he also said that, you know, not just crypto, but Voyager as well, is a global industry. When you talk about the stock market, you know, we have American stocks, we have Chinese stocks, we have European stocks, we have, you know, Australian stocks or whatnot. With the cryptocurrency industry, it's global. There's only one Bitcoin that all countries around the world purchase, one Bitcoin, right? So that's global right there. It's obviously very different for the stock market, which is primarily based in certain countries. So when we talk about that, you know, essentially that globalized industry, it really opens up an opportunity for Voyager to not just be primarily focused in the United States, but open up to Canada, open up to Europe, open up to other countries across the globe. And obviously that's very bullish on the company. That's one of my uh, kind of like bull thesis is that uh, with time, Voyager will expand into Canada, into Europe and into other countries. Now, talking about a crypto winter, this is what people attribute as the biggest risk to Voyager, a potential elongated decline in the cryptocurrency industry. First, he said that Voyager is extremely well capitalized if this situation does end up coming with over $200 million sitting in the bank. He also said that Voyager is profitable each month. This is the first time he's saying this. We just got confirmation that as of this moment in time, Voyager is reporting a profit each month. He also said that they're kicking off 50% EBITDA margins, 
50%, guys. This is crazy. 50% EBITDA margins. That's earnings before interest taxes, depreciations, and amortizations. So, you know, considering potential taxes, we can assume a net income margin of anywhere from 35 to 40% going down to the bottom line. I want to show you guys my price targets for Voyager here. We'll see here that I'm expecting a net income margin of 35%. So seeing uh, Steve saying that, you know, we're getting 50% EBITDA margins makes me very excited from the standpoint of, you know what? I think I'm right with this 35%. And if something, I'm actually being too conservative and we might get that 40%. So that makes me very excited from the standpoint of profitability at Voyager as a company. Now, uh, he also said, I can't spend money fast enough on marketing absolutely huge guys even with this huge marketing spend you know they're spending as much as they can on marketing to continue growing the platform they're still maintaining 50 percent ebitda margins which is very similar to something like a coinbase right which is another cryptocurrency exchange in the industry and you know when we talk about this and the potential for a profitable q1 this makes me very excited about the year that voyager is about to have as a company and it's one of the reasons as to why i'm comfortable holding Voyager at a 45% weighting of my portfolio. On the topic of marketing, he says that they're gonna to continue to market and continue growing their customer base, and that customers have and will continue to flock to the Voyager platform for their unique trading and saving proposition. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found any value, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you are new. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.